Welcome to the Irrelevant Podcast. I'm Nathan Jones with Alex Lewis, who has just finished up a mad batch of some awesome protein pancakes, ready and alert to have this wonderful episode 60 podcast with you guys. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to weigh them. I don't know how much I just ate. 1,200 calories, Lewis. Oh, it's probably 900, but I like I got a guesstimate on my fucking chronometer now. Did you use all the, the ingredients you normally use? Yeah, but it changes all the time. We'll say 550 grams. <laughs> oh, what if it was double that? Uh-oh. It would never be double that. Never know. I do know. I've made them enough times that I know maybe it's they, not going to be Maybe they uh, switched the it's label between on Between 525 you. and 575. What if, they, what if they switched the label on you and you didn't know it? Oh, my God, Nathan. Only you could fuck up my good day. Now I've got you, now I've got you worried about it. No, I'm not worried about it at all, but Go leave check it to you label. to try and fucking Whatever. sabotage the great day I'm having. Why are you Who having such a great day, sir? What's going on Why not? in the world? First of all, I woke up. That's Hell a good start. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'm fucking... All this work I've been doing paid off in the most random way ever, so that's cool. You care to tell the people why? I just, you know, things happen, right? Holy blurry camera. In, yeah. in, in your world, it would be God makes things happen, so... Well, prayers have been answered. You could put it that way. God made me disappear on this podcast, too. Jeez, a Lou. Come back. Just had, you know, a good. I guess it's been a week. I got a new client who is literally a world class athlete. Let's go. So that's fun. Not bad. Hmm? It can't be bad. This is driving me absolutely. Not bad at all. It's pretty fucking sweet. Even though my strongman didn't finish well on Saturday, he did, I think, the best he's done so far in competition, at least preparing for it. That's pretty solid. Got to work on some mental things on execution for game day, but preparation was there, so that was nice to do. My fucking 200 miles of travel was a little rough. I almost died twice, but... (laughs) Wait, what happened? Uh, so I think I'm partially narcoleptic and I was oh. just falling asleep while driving and almost hit a semi and then came real fucking close to hitting two cars on the side of the road. Good God. And it was at that point in time. I'm like, okay, I need a Red Bull or so seven. I had my second Red Bull of the day at that point. Speaking of which apricot strawberry Red Bulls, pretty absolute good. fire. Pretty, no, pretty good. Doesn't even begin to state how good they are. They're fucking amazing. Peach nectarine ones, also pretty good. But apricot strawberry, fire. Used to be on the Red Bull train pretty heavily. (laughs) I don't know how people drink the 16-ounce energy drinks, dude. That's fucking... The Red Bulls are enough. Why is your camera a piece of shit? I don't know. This is the worst it's ever been. This is absolutely garbage. Holy cow. Take your stupid hat off. That's probably why. It's probably... It might be. Oh, look at... Alex may know a thing or two about technology. You can't see my, you can't see this ugly mop top. That's not happened. I just some booked an appointment for a haircut before I leave for at the dirty you south. Just, for before I leave for hot Atlanta. You just sounded like tech support right there. Please, sir, can you take your hat off for me? Uh, I did that for Apple for a long time, and then I did it. Well, I didn't really do tech support for IBM, guys, but I do business to business communications. Dude, I have some excellent bedside manner when I need to. But can you face. imagine this guy on the other end? Like, this is the guy you're talking to, so you don't ever know who yeah. you're talking to. It was me when <laughs> you know when the iPhone four came out and you would grab the sides of it and the service would disappear. That I worked twenty one days in a row. I had that. that. That was the first iPhone I had. This that's the why I will never go back to iPhone. That was right my there. introduction to overtime and I was sitting at home and there was an Xbox ad for what was it like the Xbox three sixty S or something, like the cool one. Mm-hmm. I was like it was the first time in my life I just went, I'm fucking buying that right now just because I had so much overtime money. So that was a cool feeling. That's it. That's what I want. Right there. Yeah, it was just one of those things where that was like the first time I got to see something and go like, motherfucker, I'm buying that. Uh, did you did you play Battlefield 3? Did we talk about this? Are you kidding me? Dude. Did I, I ever? My brother texted me the other day and he's like, you got to get Battlefield 3. It's like three bucks on Steam. And then I looked up to see if like people were still even playing it. And there's like... Of course eight, they are. It's amazing. 800 people on the Steam library. I think I went 30 it. and 1 on that one time. Dude, like, that that's game, the best I've ever done. Game is so good. I I Battlefield was great. Yeah, then games started getting weird, but 
but or, you know, I don't know, Nathan, all the hard work is paying off. Let's just see what to do. You know how they say game. you just do it and don't worry about how you're going to get there and get it done? It's partially true. Or very absolutely true. true, I guess. Call like, Duty's I've been giving it more than I think I've ever given in my life, and I finally got something back. Yeah, I'm working on that, too. I picked up a client yesterday. I picked up a new baseball athlete guy, kid. So, yeah, it's been... Uh, I joined the Chamber of Commerce, which promotes businesses in the area. Uh got like 20 some new likes on my Facebook page and they share they're doing a good job of sharing my posts so shout out them I appreciate them trying to get me in front of more eyes uh I haven't been reaching out to 100 people today but I have been reaching out to at least 20 people a day the last I don't reach you can't reach out to more than 20 on Instagram no so I do you. yeah I do like five or six on Instagram and then I'll do as many as I can on Facebook I haven't had any they probably have the same rules on Facebook bro probably do um, I haven't had any lashback yet on it yet or I haven't been shadow banned yet. So, but, and then I've been working on, and this isn't in the complete done stages yet. Cause I'm a, trying to be a perfectionist about it, but starting some kind of like perfectionism is a form of fucking slacking. So just fuck it and do it. Yeah. Well, it's basically done. That's a cool way to up. be a lazy bitch is what perfectionism is. I'm just going to try to find a way to send out, um, just information weekly about the gym. So that if I go talk to businesses and ask them if they'd like to be a part of it or a part of the email list, and I can e grab their email and send it out to them weekly. So nice. We're making moves, baby. Making moves. Yeah, it sounds like it. Trying to drum up some business here. We're just I started two mentorships in the last week. Holy. Did you do the did you do the ROM one? Did you did you do that one? I no, I'm giving people mentorships. Oh, nice. How's that going? I mean, the first meeting is always rather jaw dropping for them. So, because you're just like, screw you, buddy. This is how it's going to be. Oh, I go through the presentation that you came out and saw. Oh, yeah. Nice. Is it like, they're like, what? How are they like older, <laughs> younger? Uh, one's older, one's younger. I mean, I don't know what you consider older. I guess is it just one you, is like, uh, well, one is the person I met at the conference. Nice. Another one is one of my clients' younger siblings. Nice. But as soon as I get done explaining all that stuff, they just go, uh, I don't what? know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, like the chick this morning was like that. I think I just learned more in that hour than I did in my entire NASM course. I was like, nice. That's cool. Yeah. That's how it be. Sometimes you walk out of places and you're like, Oh, well, that's because you were put onto the right literature at the right time. I feel like me about yeah. 10 years too late, but yeah. Well, I mean, but thank you if you didn't find it. Oh, I'd be really fucked. Yeah, you're right. That's what that's the that's how we continue the mentorship. I go, look, I'm not gonna charge you, but you gotta buy this hundred dollar textbook. Ooh, yeah. Which one? Science and practice? Yes. Great book. <clears throat> it's always where it starts. I got Austin, start there. I got Austin's book. That came in the mail the other day. Oh yeah? How is it? It looks pretty sweet. It's a really good beginner book. Like as far as like if you struggle with understanding LinkedIn shortened resistance profiles, muscle groups, what does work, what, what doesn't work, what, and you need to like make sure that you're putting progressions together correctly with specific supersets and things like that. Really good reference book, but it's just, I mean, it's all the information that you already know as far as like muscle fiber typing and resistance profiles and strength curves and, you know, it's, it's science and practice for, uh, for dummies. That's what it is. That's what it is. Right. Not as in yeah. Death. This person already had Austin's book, and she's like, "I think I have this one in my cart on Amazon." She's like, "I'm actually gonna go ahead and buy that today." Like, Wait, she had Austin's book in there. She already owned Austin's book. She had it's that's a storage book. keys book yeah, 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 yeah. in her like whatever you call it. It actually amazes me. Um, oh, I gotta sneeze. Hold on, maybe. Nope. Thanks for letting the people listening know because they're really curious. Well, I didn't want to just blow their brains away with my sneeze. I was going to try to click and mute at the mute. same time. I know. I was going to try to do it at the same time, but I guess it went away. Anyway, it was interesting. I had a conversation with a strength coach one time, and like, he has a lot of athletes and does a lot of things and posts a lot of people. And we were talking about books that we had read and like where we learned the most and stuff. And he was like, I was like, have you read Science and Practice? And he was like, no, I haven't read that one. And I'm like, huh? How have you consider yourself a coach of athletes and you haven't read that book. Like I just don't, it doesn't compute. So, cause the first time I read I that know. book, I was just like, 
it opened up my eyes big time. I was like, oh, okay. This makes a lot more sense now. So, uh-huh. I think it's a go-to for anyone, even if you coach the general population. Like, it's still applicable. Yeah, it's got really good chapters in there about coaching general population. And, and older people. So it's even got a whole chapter dedicated to it. That's what I mean. I think the name of it speaks for itself. It is the science and practice of strength training. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. probably know those things. Maybe. And then it just takes you down a whirlwind of all kinds of wonderful literature. And then you just go to Louis, you go to Westside Barbell, and it's just like, read all this. Right. And then those books are just even more mm-hmm. from the knowledge of wealth, wealth of knowledge. Right. Knowledge of wealth, wealth of knowledge. Wealth That's of it. Knowledge. That's it. Anyway. But yeah, we got done, and she's like, "You don't charge for this." <laughs> I was like, "No." <laughs> was she just trying know. to ask questions, and then you just like let me mentor you, or like? Mm, she was getting pitched by somebody from the conference about signing up for their business coaching. And and I was then, like, "Well, I got like six actually, of those emails." You know. What I actually do is I have a mentorship that I do for free for coaches if you want. She went, really? Yeah. Like, I need some help. Thank you so much. So if there's anyone listening to this ever that's interested in being a coach, I if I have time, I would gladly mentor you on what you should be doing to get results and make money. Nah, he can't do it. I don't believe. Yeah, no, definitely can't, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, poor girl. She doesn't know what she just got. Unbelievable. Swindled her for free 90 free. What a jerk. Uh, an hour of her time. And yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, so it's okay. Alex is pretty good about responding to people. I mean, he responded to me out of, an, out of the kindness of his wonderful heart. I respond to everyone. I know. Most people don't Except think for that. apparently ghost girls that I forget about. <laughs> Did you see that I shit? I saw the other that day? one. I was like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Like, maybe it's your bad fucking punctuation or inability to text correctly that made me not want to respond. <laughs> <laughs> like, that might have something to do with it. I'm just, just saying. Yeah, you got lit up on that one. I was like, oh, so no. for all you, all you kids out there that, you know, choose to abbreviate words that don't need abbreviating because you're too fucking lazy, someone's going to look at that one day and go, you're fucking dumb. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Yep. So if you're doing a job, if you're filling out a resume or doing a job interview, use big words. No, don't use big words. Just communicate clearly. And when you text somebody, Ooh, good luck. spell the motherfucking words. <laughs> I had two job references I had to fill out this week. So trying to get That's trying fun. to get trying to get Carly a job. Although I offered him a job, he turned me down, Jack Wagon. Then you should definitely not be a reference for him. You're fired, Carly. I would just tell him no. Like I tried to get him to work for me, and he said no. So I would not. I would not hire him. Oh, he's letting a female influence his decisions. Oh, is that what it is? Uh, I think that's some of it. I that's a know. bold move. Bold strategy, Cotton. Yeah, that's a very, especially at that age, they don't know what they want. Nobody does at that age. What are you talking about? Oh, I did. I wanted pussy. That's what I wanted. Yeah. Well, okay. Case in point. <laughs> Case in point, everyone. Case yeah. in point. Exactly. No, I don't want that at all. I figured far, out far away. what I wanted at 29. How about the one question I got? Can you set me up with one of your friends? I'm like, oh, I require having friends. Yeah, that I don't. Those, dude, that that app is really random and really weird, I feel like. Yeah, something else. I'm just like, I don't even think Ooh. this stuff's real. I think they're just screwing and people. We just got the trophies in for the comp. They're pretty they sweet. Good? Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of which, <clears throat> thanks to, uh, let's see, let's go Rugged Rehab and Strength. Thank oh. you for that sponsorship. That's a good one. That a Thank you. One? Uh, yeah, that is a new one. I got it last night. Nice. Trying to wrap up this fucking, we're 85% there, bro. We need 1500 bucks. Oh, man. Come on, people. Get your wallets out. Be nice. And say thanks to Gym 5. Thanks to Elevation Athletic Performance. Thanks to Mountain Barbell. Thanks to, what the fuck is 
there's so many of them. Cell Buddy was one of them. Thank you, Cell Buddy. Buddy. What's Cell Buddy? Yeah, they help you sell shit. Oh, like that kind of sell. I was thinking like Cell Buddy, yeah. like C. No, like selling things. Interesting. Okay. Um, one of them was a gas station because the president's dad owns a gas station. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that was cool. I should have uh, donated else? some uh, hot dogs for the winter. Right. Jumbo um, dogs. There's a consulting company that gave us a sponsorship, so thanks to them. Uh, what else we got here? I'm trying to think. I should just pull up the fucking, <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, spreadsheet, clearly, because I don't know what I'm saying. This guy doesn't even know who's sponsoring. Thanks, him. Element. Dude, there's a lot of them, okay? That's good. That's great. And working hard. Yeah. I, oh, dude, I know. Trust me. I have no idea. I'm like, God, dude. Getting sponsorships, that just it sounds like the most miserable nightmare experience that you could possibly go through. It's been easy. I don't mind it, actually. That's good. Well, then you're cut out for it because I'm not. I don't like getting sponsorships. Well, there's this crazy thing, dude, is when you ask someone for help, nine times out of ten, they want to help you. That's that's actually pretty true. I do think people want to help. I don't think that that – I don't think – feeds, feeds the ego. I can't move. I'm on this rubber mat. My chair won't move. <laughs> For anyone not watching, Nathan is just fl- yeah. flailing around like a <laughs> retard. I'm right trying now. really hard to move my chair, and it's not working. But I do think, yes, I do agree with that. I think people, in their core, at their if they're good, if they're decent human beings whatsoever, they want to help you. Oh, last week while we were on the show, I got the results that I passed my ref test. Yep, that was cool. Yeah, who did you That's talk? So who did who did you go over with that? Who did you talk to about? J.R. Bolger, I think his name is. He's the head technical dude. Nice. I've seen that name on Instagram a lot. Yeah, he's apparently been a ref for a long time. <coughs> Seems like a nice dude. He's a nice lady. Get to hang out with him in Montaigne. Oh, Montaigne. i to do my practical that Friday when I get there. Practical? How long is that going to take you? Oh, I probably have to sit through both sessions and watch and then do. Don't mess it up, buddy. Oh, I'll fuck something up, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, first one. It's fine. No big deal. Yeah. Don't panic. <clears throat> I won't. He's not even worried about it. No, not at all. You shouldn't be. Sit and watch people squat, bench, and deadlift all the time. It's okay. <laughs> I think I can handle it. Uh, yes. Got it. <laughs> yes. No. Well, you could just hit a button on a phone, but yeah. Oh. That's not as fun. I guess. If it had a buzzer on it, that'd be even better. <laughs> light and a red light, bro. There is no there's no noise in Come it. Come on, we gotta spice it up a little bit, you know? Let people's hearts sink a little bit. Maybe when I when I have one, I'll fucking when they hit the red light, I'll go wah wah wah. <laughs> that'd be hilarious. What makes your uh, meats unique? Well, we have this cool little sound. We have this cool feature that when you fuck up. And then, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> dude i would die i would laugh so hard i do need to figure out a way to make so we have walkout music i feel like i feel like that would be a step above that would be cool maybe needs. should you do it on every attempt or on the last attempt all of them hmm. i would maybe let you pick a song for each lift that'd be cool which one would you pick three? What three would you pick? Ooh. What three would I pick? Ooh. Ooh, that's, that's tough. What yeah. three songs would get me hyped up? I got one uh, already. I don't know. I'd probably go is. Dysfunctional by Tech 9 for one of them for sure. That's interesting. That's a good one. That's a good um, song. What else we got here? Probably something from Kevin Gates, like Out the Mud. He kind of does. He's got some like bangers that kind of get you there. Yeah. Some. Dude, I think I'm going to go see him at Red Rocks with that Mexican OT. And That'd then, uh, good. actually, I do like that Mexican OT, the Point Amount song. That's a good one. I maybe roll with those three right now. Maybe some Slipknot. Slipknot would be a good one. There's this one by Kaizo. It's called Battle Drums. That, that would be the one for sure. Yeah. That, that'd be the go to. Uh, Ooh. Training for Battle by King Iso. That's a good one. I was, I've, that one came to my mind as well. I've heard that one a couple times. It's a good one, especially because it's talking about lifting. So it's just, you know. Right. <coughs> right, right, right. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'd have to, I'm going to have to think about this one and go look at them. Probably something by I Prevail. 
one of theirs are usually any of theirs are usually really pretty good. You just gotta think like, what do you turn to when you need a fucking hype up song? You know, I'm kind of good either way. Like, I don't really, yeah, I don't know that battle drum song. It's a it's a good one. That's a banger. I'm a big fan of that one. Yeah, I don't know the other two though. Maybe I just put that on repeat. That's a good one. Just for all nine attempts. Just whoosh, roll it through, baby. Maybe some of the. Do you know what the Who? H U. It's this Mongolian fucking like rock I, band thing. I've heard They're of them. They're pretty I've cool. Never watched them. They they I've get after it. Them. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. Mongolian rock band. They have to be good. That's pretty sweet. You always go Ramstein, right? Do. That's a that's one that doesn't miss. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Smash. I feel like any most. Although of them I think it, the song is just them whining about people not accepting them for being gay. Correct. Uh, oh. Most Eminem songs are pretty good. Someone, uh, so I am part of follow this Colorado Strength Coalition thing, and they put on their like what are overrated hype songs. Saying someone said everything by Eminem, I was like, really? What's that's, wrong with you? That's overrated. Yes. Huh. Someone also said "Bodies" by Drowning Pool was overrated. I think uh, what's that disturbed song? Not the most down with the sickness. No, not that one. That one's wow. that's not a great one. I don't feel like, but there's no, another it's a good one. one. Uh, Voodoo by Godsmack. Voodoo, that's I'm a good not one. The one who's so far away. You know what that song is about? Uh-uh. Heroin. Shocker. And I feel the snake bite enter my veins. Never Shocker. did I want to be here again. Shocker and that... I don't remember why I came. Lemon God would be. Some Lemon God ones would be. Anyways, sorry for my tangent. <clears throat> current. Any of the current songs would be good. Uh, Falling in Reverse are pretty good. Those are good ones. They scream a little bit. Watch the World Burn. That'd be a good one. Oh, someone also said in that comment about Eminem. They also threw Tech Nine in there. I'm like, man, the fuck is wrong with you people? I don't know a bad Tech Nine song, like hype song. <laughs> no, it's a good one. The one he did with Excision. It's called Roadkill. Yeah, it's a good one. Starts with "I need energy." That's a pretty good start. Like, Beast. Beast is always a good one to go to. Oh yeah, I mean, they didn't put it in Madden for no reason. Yeah, a tameable beast. Um, I like uh, fucking. Uh, Riot Maker. That's a great one. Just because at every hits. show of his, when he does Riot Maker, I saved a girl from almost dying during the show. I have no doubt. That, whole, that song hit so hard at the beginning. Those well, dr- she had no idea that everybody was about to mosh, and she was a big lady, and she fell and was about to get trampled. I somehow pulled her up with one arm. I don't know. It was chaos. It literally says, we're going to start this Show off We're gonna right. start this shit off right. Yeah, <laughs> we got Casey. What do you in think he's talking tonight. about? <laughs> they had no idea. They didn't know. That was the first concert I ever went to as a as a kid. Was Tech? Dang, Nine. that's a hell of a first concert. 19. That's pretty hard to. That's pretty hard to uh, one up, dude. I haven't been and to that many long concerts. ago. He was crushing it. I haven't been to many concerts because I think that's why I'm like, man, I don't want to. It can't be better than this. It's, it's, no, it's really hard to beat his shows. Because that was like, uh, I might go see some Prof and Yellow Wolf in July. Yeah, that, that would, would be, be good. Because that was right when all sixes and sevens came out, and I was like, the girl I was dating at the time in the Apology truck. 101. I just had that freaking CD on repeat, and she's like, I'm so sick and tired of this. I'm going to take you to a concert, and then will you please never listen to this yes. again? And I'm like... No. <laughs> You're like, I'm only going to listen to it more. I'm like, like I'm not sure. I'm going to walk out of the concert, and I'm just going to be going nuts. And it was like... I took my ex to one, and my buddy drove, so I was, you know, having the time of my life. So <laughs> much so, we're in line at the Fillmore, and the line at the Fillmore goes all the way around the block, and I ended up being the person starting the chance by the time we were almost inside. Oh, that's awesome. It was absurd. I've never been so out of pocket at a fucking show before I went in than that one. It was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, they wouldn't let anyone under the age of twenty one down on the mosh floor. That's fair. So like the the it was at an old school theater and they had like a balcony section, so we had to go up on the balcony. But like you could just see down and watch all the stuff that was. Yeah, happening. I don't know if I, I've probably moshed more at those shows than any other show. Dude, it was nuts. Because, like, uh-huh. Prozac, they started the mosh when Prozac came out. Sure. And they put out their, their guys with their masks, jumped down into the crowd, and, like, split them. And they were like, 
we're just gonna run right at each other. And he led it and ran right in. Oh, it was. They, what do they call that? They call that something at metal shows. It's uh, I don't know, but it was like awesome. the wall of something. Dude, they just collide, and then people. I mean, just going at each other. I love it. Was crazy. that same show? These idiots kept trying to mosh after Riot Maker, and they ran into me. So I just fucking shoved one of them as hard as I could, and they looked at me and they're like, "Oh, I'm sorry." <laughs> I exp- my moshing experience is now done. I also had some <laughs> fucking idiots stop right in front of me. Like, I, you get to the show early to get to the front, right? And then people right. try to make their way to the front. And this lady and her boyfriend, someone, they stopped and they're talking right in front of me. I go, you need to get the fuck out of the way. And they're like, what? <laughs> I go, get the fuck out of the way. They're like, but I don't, I don't give a fuck. Get they, the fuck out of the way. Yeah, they always act like, oh, we're supposed to be here. But then they kind of like look at no, you. No, I've, I've never gotten into more almost close calls for fights than a uh, tech nine show and people try to sneak up to the front people skipping lines oh i get i get mad i don't i don't do well with that uh, it's it's very annoying i would agree well like Dude, motherfucker okay. i didn't get here early so you could try to get in front of me like fuck you yeah exactly they you just like try to push their way and i'm like no this ain't you, happening you didn't do what you were supposed to do that's not my fault although the rudest people i've ever run into was at a tim mcgraw concert so Really? Yeah, it's Cheyenne Frontier days. I'm sitting, standing there with my girlfriend. We're holding hands, and this girl and her boyfriend try to walk between us. I'm like, can I help you? Can I help you? I, I know I'm not dressed like a cowboy like all you fucking idiots, but no, no, no. <laughs> not how this is going to go. Oh. Like, so, needless to say, Cheyenne Frontier days blows. Tim McGraw show blows. Yeah, Tim McGraw's. I had a barbecue stain on my white t-shirt. I'd rather, I'd rather it be. Uh, I thought it was gonna be good, man. Garth I just, Brooks, I like Garth Brooks, I've heard is good. Yeah, I want to see Brooks and Dunn. They would be good. Yeah, I've heard they're good. Fucking neon moon. Kitty. I want to go see Kitty Chesney. Uh, fuck that guy, dude. Couldn't really? be gayer than he's gayer than a bag full of dicks. Kitty Chesney? I don't think so. For sure. No. Gayer than a golf helmet. Okay, sim- a golf helmet. What? <laughs> What's that even mean? <laughs> What does that mean? Exactly. Don't you think you should probably wear a helmet in golf? Because you get hit in the head. You're fucked. Dude, I have contemp... Dude, I'm telling you right now. There's times... Okay. okay. So, Saturday... Million dollar idea. Somebody make a golf helmet and then make it a requirement to wear them. And boom! Dude, Saturday... 24 days. Saturday, I'm playing in a tournament. Oh, shit. Nathan's about to get worked over in a tournament. No, we got third. Me and my buddy got third. But anyway, first He's still lost. We got third place. Shut the hell up. We didn't play. Yeah, you were the second. I loser. played good. Yeah. I played good. My partner. Oh, did now it. you're blaming. Look at. I am gonna blame are. him. He never mind. Anyway, I'm blaming him. He sucked that day. Anyway, uh, the Look very guys, first Nathan is such a coward that he won't even take the blame for losing. He just okay. got to pass off. I could have played else. better. Is that was that it? I could have played. Yeah, better. Yeah, that's what a real leader would say. Shut not your you, mouth. Clearly. Shut your mouth. Anyway, story. I we're on the first tee and we're grouped with these two guys. We've never played with them before. That. It, this it gets better, but anyway, it, we I hit my first tee shot. For that caveat because it started off real shitty. <laughs> Shut your mouth. Three twenty five. The hole is three hundred and twenty five yards away, and I'm waiting. And the guys in the group are like, "Why are you waiting? It's like thirty five degrees. You're not gonna, you're not gonna hit them." And I'm like, "Uh, I mean, there's a chance if I get a hold of one, it's probably gonna go to the green." And they're like, "No way, really?" And I was like. Yeah, dude, I should probably wait. He's like, no, nah, just were go the ahead. the people you, you were doing it with? Yeah. You were I, waiting for the people in front of you to go, and yeah. they thought you were being silly? The people, the people in my group were like, no, nah, you're not going to. And I mean, right. I, I hit one that landed 10 feet, it it. 10 feet right of the green, or left of the green. And all I see are the people. They look back from the green and just look at us, and I'm like, oh, boy. I yelled four as loud as I could yell. I don't think they heard me. And then we get up there, and they're like, was that you? And I'm like, yeah, I yelled four. My bad. And they're like, holy God, what the? Where did that come from? It's 30 degrees, and you just hit a 320-yard drive. I'm like, it's normal, guys. I don't I don't know what to tell you. But then that explosiveness we, through rotation. Dude, uh, we keep playing, and we get to, like, the fourth hole. And the other guys are, like, walking because it's cold, so they want to stay warm. And we get to, like, the fifth hole, and this guy's like, you guys want some shots? And we were like, oh, yeah, sure, no big deal. So we're thinking like the little shooters or whatever. Dude pulls out a fifth of Weller. He just pulls a fifth of Weller out of his bag, and he's like, all right, boys, it's about to be a good time here. I was like, what the heck? 
they do just, things differently in Missouri. Who just has a fifth of Weller in their golf bag? But I don't even know what Weller is. That's the, that's some cheap ass whiskey. It sounds like no, it's expensive whiskey actually. Oh, bourbon. That's bourbon. But anyway, bourbon. <clears throat> What's the difference between bourbon and whiskey? Uh, how, in the South? how they distill it. How they distill it. I have no idea. But anyway, yeah, uh, I was talking about rotational power with someone the other day because I was playing golf with some guys that were baseball players and I was playing golf with some guys that were wrestlers. And you can just tell like the wrestlers don't, they don't rotate very well and they don't sequence very well. And so like they don't swing as fast. And they're like, how do we get to that level? Like, how do we swing as fast as you? And I'm like, well, I think I benefited from playing baseball from such an early age, like rotating fast and swinging fast are not something that I have to like think about. And now that I'm, got- I just try to make contact. And everybody tells me like, don't try to hit it. So hard. I'm like, I'm, I'm not <laughs> I, literally uh, just trying to con- contact with the ball. It's so funny. Cause like people will be like, dude, you're swinging so hard. And I'm like, that's not even like, that's my cruising speed. Cause like if I'm in, if I'm in here, I can, I mean, my swing speed gets up 135, 136, 137. But if I'm on the course, I'm only trying to swing at like 125. But 125 is still really fast for a lot of people. And they're just like, dude, you look like you're just trying to crush it. And I'm like, I'm really not swinging that hard, my man. Like, it can get a lot. I was like, do you want to see what happens? There was a hole. It was like, my buddy was in the fairway. And so I got to go. I was like, I'm just going to swing hard. And it was uh, 380 to the hole. And I put it 10 yards from the green and they were like, Oh my God, what is wrong with you, dude? And I was like, why, how do you hit the ball like this? And I'm like, I, just, I Only lift weights. Better fucking mid and short game. Yeah, it was so. I know we, you're not even good at lifting weights. How crazy is that? I know, but it's, it also cracks me up <laughs> because like the, the long drive people, they, they'll post like what their big three lifts are and they hit the ball a ton, like super far and things like that. And they're not even like that strong. I'm like, I'm stronger than all these dudes. Like they just, they just have better technique. They've done better. Yeah. They have better technique. And I'm like, man, I can't wait till I can figure out how to swing this club. Cause we're going to be a real, we're going to be talking. So anyway, it was just funny. I was just like, um, yeah, I can't hit it that far. And then there was a couple holes where the wind was blowing right in our face. And the guy's like, well, what do you do when the wind's blowing in your face like this? Do you like try to hit a low one to keep it under the wind? And I was like, no, I just nope. say F the wind. Drive I, right through that I hit it right wind. through it. And I hit it like 310 still right through the wind. And I was like 60 yards ahead of him. He's like, I hate you, dude. He's like, you suck. <laughs> it was a fun day. It was a fun day. It was a good time. So anyone who needs golfing help, Nathan can maybe make you a better golfer. I think maybe. they can make you hit the ball further for damn sure. Well, I could do that. I think a lot of people could do that, but I don't think golf is a weird space. The training in golf is really bad. Like if you watch what the professionals training do, in most sports is really bad, dude, I hate, cause I watched the full swing series on Netflix and all the pros will be training like after their rounds and stuff. And I'm just like, ugh, this is not it. Like, stop. I mean, I've now dived into marathon training and let me tell you, I think my athletes, the only one that does strength training. Yeah. But it would make sense. Strength training always makes sense in every capacity. At some point, you need some kind of strength training. Just depends on. You mean when you run for two and a half hours, you should be strong? I don't know. Well, yeah, your joints need to be strong. That's how you strengthen your. Oh, I don't even do that with her. Wait, you don't do what? We were pulling deadlifts yesterday. We were not, not fucking. <coughs> not what? We're not doing FRC stuff. We're not. <laughs> no, no. I mean, like just lifting heavy weights will change the composition of your joints. Give you more tendon resiliency. Yeah, that's probably a good thing when you're running on concrete or whatever you want to run freak. on. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah. Dude, she's uh, literally one of the best in the world. God. How fast does she do her marathon in? Yes. You don't know? No, I know. Oh, you I said yes. yes. I thought you said yes. Yeah. I was like, what? Uh, I don't know what a fast marathon time is, so. Four, four mm, hours. For an average person, under three hours is good. I bet she does three forty-six. Try two twenty-four. Oh my god! Can you imagine? I think is a five-minute mile pace. That is absolutely bonkers. <laughs> I Thank can't. You. Let's do the math real quick. Can't run a mile in under nine minutes, probably, or eight minutes. 
Uh, so I think five if I miles twenty six point right, one. Yeah, she's at a basically five minute mile pace. Two and a half hours. So here's a question for you. Um, well, how do you do what, what, what do you do in their training? Do you change a whole lot from what you do or do you just allow her to get the running she needs based on her doing the running that she needs? And then I'm using just, training as a supplement, right? So how many times per week does she come see you twice, twice a week? And then you just let her run her miles based on that. Yeah. All hundred and fucking 20 of them or whatever it is. Jesus Christ. No, <laughs> no thanks. I'm good. So yesterday we did a session after her speed day and I was like, well, we're going to have to adjust this workout a little bit next time because after her the jumps were not quite as explosive. Yeah, they do speed days. I'm confused. Like she just did a speed day on her own or what? She has a running coach, which is her dad, ironically. But Oh, okay. The speed day for the marathon? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. mm. You got to be fast for the two and a half hours. So how long? Well, like... How long are how long is she running for her speed days? Uh, what did she say? I don't really remember what it was. It yeah, was, what's because I'm thinking like sprint work, but like what's her <laughs> distance? Uh, it was almost like that. She said she felt like she was bounding because compared to her counterpart, like <laughs> her stride was so much longer. Right, but it's definitely not the distances we're thinking of. Probably, it's not hundred meter sprints. No. Right, that's that's what I'm asking. I bet like it would a be four hundred. Yeah, then... yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Still, yeah. Oh, and some other stuff, and then another four hundred. So, I don't so then she came to you after, and she just gassed. Mm, not gas, but I could notice there was a definitely less explosiveness than when I saw her on Friday after her. What was that? Her lactic training, as she calls it. Her lactic power training. Yeah. I was reading about uh, sequencing of exercise yesterday in super training while I was taking my two mile stroll. But explosive wise, like when I met with her on Friday for the first time, I was like having her do single leg jumps to two feet. Like she's got a foot problem. That's so I'm like trying to take it easy and we're landing on the sand dune. Holy fuck. Single leg strength pretty strong, huh? Or explosiveness. Just yeah, she's like we're doing the weird thing though is like it comes to an abrupt stop quickly. We're doing box squats and she's like throwing the fucking bar off of her back. That's how explosive she is out right. of the bottom. Right. Like this is incredible. But then all of a sudden, it's just like all of a sudden you just hit a wall. Hmm. Like where I would normally tell someone they could add like another 15, 10, 15 pounds. I just added 10 and all of a sudden it was like, er, Couldn't reaching move. all. I'm like, oh, huh. weird. Wonder why huh. that is. Because she's more endurance based. So she's just, her power, she's just like, done. Can't, doesn't have. Kinda, yeah. Same thing with deadlifts the... yesterday. I put an extra 10 pounds on and. She just only got one instead of two. I was like, hmm. No more contractions. Sorry, we're done. What happened here? We don't do this type of work. Sorry about you. Oh, she has. She used to be a sprinter once upon a time. And then she switched to marathon running? Oh, my God. That's probably the way to do it, though. You know what I mean? I think there's something to be said and had from it. Because, like, the longer you can produce higher amounts of force, the faster you're going to go. True. So, like, if you don't recycle it well, like, I think the African people do. With their crazy tendons. Yeah. I think you have to produce it. So it's kind of like that. Not to that extreme, obviously, but. Do what now? So her tendons, like when you were talking about her jumps, is she pretty springy? She was on Friday. Right. Yesterday, there was, there was a noticeable decrease. And that's just from that adaptation occurring so early um, on in her life, you think? I think, I don't know. I don't know where the explosiveness comes from, but I was impressed. I was like, this is a whole different ball game we're in now, folks. She just goes, whoop. Yeah. Yeah. You could tell good jumpers from like people that are not at all. It's uh -huh. it's 100%. like night and day. Like I've got a kid on the mound, super explosive, like throws the ball pretty hard. And then he comes in here to jump and you're just like, oh my God, dude, he can barely jump on a 44. And you're like, <laughs> why can't you, if we could get your jumps, if we could get your rate of force development up, come on now. Like, but he ran cross country a lot. So that was kind of his like off season sport was cross country. I'm like, you gotta stop running cross country. We gotta stop like powerlifting in the off season. You're killing your you're killing your development as a baseball player if you're gonna go run cross country and just run and run and run and run. Like you gotta we gotta pair your sports a little bit better here, man. <laughs> so he quit, which is good, and his jumps went up. I was like, okay, well, 
Maybe because yeah, you're not. So it'll be interesting to balance the stress of the running with the. Yeah, training. that's that's always a fun dynamic. Saturday sure. when I talked to her, she's like, "I feel great." She's like, "I feel better than I did day yesterday." I'm like, probably her body's not. How the training good. should work. Yeah, her body's probably more resilient now, so it's like, hey, I can do a little bit more now. Well, and we did low stress things that are going to help potentiate into better things down the road. Instead of just throwing some hypertrophy at her. Oh God! Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> So you're just probably increasing intensity, but keeping the reps fairly low and moderate. I mean, we're doing some like strength speed stuff and then we're doing some like, I guess it's more strength speed with unilateral work and then some metabolic work. Oh, buddy. Explosiveness with jumps. Oh, buddy. But I think she was feeling the metabolic effects. Woke up the next day feeling good. I was I asked her on Saturday, she's like, I feel really good. How's your foot feel? Feels great. All right. Well, we got an idea where to go. All right. You didn't crush her, so then now you can work off that. Yeah. I think that's what a lot of coaches do. They try to crush people right off the bat. It's like, well. Yeah, no, I'm just going to have her do some brief maximal tension. and that will be more than enough. Finish stuff. Yeah, that will be more than enough. Unilateral work and yeah. jumps. And Why did you choose unilateral? What is her sport? <laughs> Fuck Come you talking about? Talk I more. I'm trying to talk about strength and conditioning. Here's the, oh, uh, well, you think? Why, you? Why I know I why. Tell the people. Like, what I'm, the fuck are you talking about? Like, I hate this guy. Literally on one foot at a time. Majority literally, of the time. literally, last week he's like, we don't always talk about strength and conditioning. And I'm like, okay, well, here's the strength and conditioning. And then he gives me answers like that. And I'm like, yeah, cool, buddy. What do you cool. want me to do? You want me to be like, oh, you know, because you want me to sound all fucking nerdy and scientific about yes! some simple bullshit <laughs> yeah like, it's not that hard folks it is for some people though it's like oh uh, well i don't know he's I picking unilateral it exercises because she needs sport basically... to produce force at a high rate so we do something to allow her to produce a lot of force and then we need to work on individual unilateral strengths so then we do you know some solid repetition work there so you do are you doing bilateral and then unilateral or you only do unilateral yeah both so Peak potential, trying to get maximal force output, and then maximal force output within the actual unilateral. Well, exercise. then I'm just trying to get her stronger, right? Unilaterally, right? Because she has to. I guess I, I found a deficiency from left to right, so that's probably usually the case with a lot of unilateral people or like runners in general, don't you think? I have no idea. I don't know shit about runners. You better figure it out, buddy. Uh, I got the I got the best one in the country. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what I do. She's gonna go kill it. Yeah. Just don't hurt her. That's the key. I was like, if I get you an American record, what do I get? She's That's like, what? I'll give you a million dollars. I was like, I was like, you get millions of dollars for an American record? She's like, yeah. I was like, all right. Wow. Where's she Game from on. originally? Here? At Colorado? Boulder. Yeah. Wow. Game on. One million. Game on. I'm going to put that I mean, in the she title. Is, she is sponsored by Nike, so that's cool. Alex is chasing a million dollars. I'm not though. Well, I'm trying to produce results. But, but that is a byproduct you, of why I'm such in a good mood today, Nathan. Is all I've been doing is chasing results. That's and great. I've been rewarded with tons of money. But you chasing <laughs> results, is, yeah, exactly. Like you chasing results is going to lead to good things. We're excited about it. Yeah, almost, I'm so elated today. I'm almost religious. I'm almost almost bought in. We've almost converted him, folks. Keep praying. You guys didn't do shit. Yeah, huh? We're praying for you, buddy. I'm praying for you. Yeah, okay. I pray Okey for you. Dokey. I pray for you. Oh, thanks. Good looking yeah. out. Well, I'm just going to attribute it to my gratitude list every morning and evening. That's a, Well, my gratitude list is my prayer list. That's kind of what I was getting ah, at. Ah, gotcha. Because I'm praying for okay. them. Because I, I always, that's kind of how my prayers start is like being thankful and being like, thank you, Lord, for what you've done and what you're doing and all that cool stuff. And then I, that I talk to Lord about, like, talk to God about, like, the things I'm thankful for. And so, anyway. Hmm. And then I said, I yeah, ask this yeah, I, I'm religious. I guess I'm, I guess I'm think. I go, I think I'm getting freaking happy with this guy. I'm thankful for this guy, I guess. I don't know. No, just kidding. I don't know. Just here to transmit information. That's all I'm here for. Well, you do a pretty good job of it, I guess. Oh, thanks. Yeah. 
except for when I tried to ask you a unilateral question. And you're like, hey, yeah. Well, I mean, come on. I just feel like that one's pretty obvious. Like, why would no, you do unilateral work not- with a running person? Because, it's- well, they, they spend a lot of time using their body unilaterally. No, because people get caught up in that whole, like, uh, what is it? The force, the bilateral deficit thing that talk, like people talk about. You shouldn't really do worry about single leg stuff because if you're only doing single leg stuff, then you create a bilateral deficit. You know, there's that, a bilateral deficit no matter what. Yeah. Well, I'm you just will saying, always be stronger one limb at a time than you would be together. I'm just saying your body's having to put force <laughs> into two things instead of one. I'm just saying that's what's in the literature. But people get caught up on that. What a lot. literature? That's in science and practice. What? The, there's a deficit? Like that you shouldn't spend as much time on unilateral exercises when you're trying to do max forks output activities. Well, I totally agree with that because the stability is going to allow you to focus more on the force. Right. But so I'm of, not doing a max force output. Right. But a lot of I mean, people. I guess I have in the sense from a single to double leg jump. But see, like you could have. jumps ex- off one leg and lands on two. But you could have explained that. You could have said, see, I'm addressing this and still doing this. I told you that. I said I started no, with single to two leg told box me. jumps. You told, listen, I understand then, the words that are coming out of your and mouth. And then we did bilateral. We did a bilateral movement in the form of a box squat. Why? Because the box squat seems to help runners tremendously. Why? I don't know. Because the shin angle is the same as sprinting, from what I've heard. That's what it sounds. That's what I keep hearing. I don't know. That's what I've been told. I watched but. that sprinting uh, video that Louis did with that runner, that girl runner that was like trying to. Get to the the freakish girl that he like training. Holy cow, dude. She's so freaking strong. And like all the band tension she was doing on that box squat at that really high bar. I, was oh, yeah, like, I can't oh, wait to get some bands on this chick and just fucking let her rip. Holy moly. She had like two blues on there, I think, or something. I don't know. It was nuts. I was like, this is pretty That's cool to watch. But I don't know. It's just this is the way my brain works. I don't know what you want me to tell you. <clears throat> yeah, well, you know, we're trying to educate the masses out there. I'm not. Yes, you are. Sign up for the coaching mentor if you want to be <laughs> Free plug. plug. Free plug. <laughs> um, I don't oh, know. That's I, funny. I think there's probably some videos on my YouTube that might educate you. I don't know, fucking know. It's the best when I tell people about this podcast. Like, what do you guys talk about? I'm like, eh, whatever. They're like, I just like strength even. and conditioning. I'm like, yeah, no, no whatever. It just no. doesn't matter. We only talk about strength and conditioning really when strength and conditioning episodes are like people come on. Yeah. Speaking Outside of which. Of that, so I got two guests for next month, or two guests. Me, I'm up two zero. Haha. Ha. Uh, I guess two. What to do one. you mean two zero? Two one. I guess two to one. I brought Anthony on already this year. What are you talking? He doesn't about? count. He's a double up. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. That totally count. No, it doesn't count. Nope. What do you mean? Getting somebody who just broke a world record doesn't count. Go. He's fuck already. Himself. He already came on. He already came on. No. He's a repeat. Repeats don't count. I've stopped even reaching out to people because I just don't even care anymore. Yes, you do. We care. Eh. Well, she just she put like it. And I have one from the conference that needs to come on. I just haven't set a date yet. She did the she just put the question oh. thing on there and I was like, you wanna come on a podcast? Question mark? She was like mm, I did see. That's a, yeah, that's that's an easy open. Hit me up with the I got it. I got a presenter from the conference too. I just haven't set a time down yet. Which one? Jamie. Oh yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah, she's awesome. Yeah, she's funny as hell. Her wife bought me a drink at the strip club and we talked for like an hour. That was cool. Maybe longer. Uh, I don't know. The the the, the order a drink and they're they're like it's fifty dollar minimum. And her wife looks at me and she's like, "Do you want a drink?" I was like, "I guess, yeah, thank you." Fifty dollar minimum, folks. Yeah. No thanks. I'm good. Oh, so Vegas does it. Um, and then yeah, I talked to Jamie for quite a while, and I was like, "Hey, would you come on a podcast?" I'd love to. Probably, nice. She probably didn't know what she was getting into. <laughs> I mean, she might. Yeah, you know what. We might not be talking about a lot on here, but we're going to have a good time. I was telling her how she needs to charge more money. Yeah, you were saying that she doesn't hardly charge. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. I mean, she sense. does. It's just she has so many clients that I'm like, you could charge more. Hey, this is the lady. The lady that's coming on was the one that you were like, how does she have that much money? Yeah, I know. She had the best presentation. There you go. So you're you're going to get yeah, to ask her. All I was, was going to ask her, but the, you beat me to it. So good job. Look at me. Look at me. Making moves. Yeah, she'll be a good one. She'll be a good one. Move. I liked her presentation. It was good. We need to get Beth on here. That'd be a good one. Yeah, Beth would be fun. Beth would be hilarious. That's a good call. 
man, I let, I can't believe that Summit saga is still going on. Like he's still having. <laughs> I to... knew you're gonna bring it up again, you fucking asshole. I just can't believe he's still. It's still going no, on. No, I think it was resolved. I mean, yeah, because that douchebag posted something and then he took it down, and then wouldn't even let him comment. I was like, what? I didn't catch that part. I just know that there was a post regarding what was happening. And then I went back to look to see the comments on the post and it was gone. But then we, then we got an email. Aram's about like, it. Aram's like, go ahead and fucking comment. I'm like, Nathan got me started on this on the last podcast. And I went <laughs> on for like 30 minutes. I'm like, I don't think I need to do this. Again. If he does that, there's going to come a point in the comments where it's just Alex for like 30 consecutive comments. I just I I will hurt people's feelings and I'm not trying to be that person. I mean it sounded like that guy needs some hurt feelings. Or no, because douche. he's so lost in whatever space that he's in, you can't hurt his he just believes his own crap at this point. You know what I mean? Oh uh, no, I'll just rip on him about the planet fitness post. Like you fucking idiot. Like don't even get me fucking started with that hey, shit. Hey, we love planet no, I'm just kidding. We hate No, planet we fitness. don't. Planet we Fitness can it. suck a dick. We hate it. Oh, Neutrodine just got delivered. Nice. Good good time. Time. Yeah. Performance, performance drink. Oh. Performance drink. Instead of purple drink, it's performance, performance drink. Performance drink. <laughs> <laughs> Killing uh, it. I heard I some the, bands this week too. I sent the uh the story you made about meal prepping for your one of your clients in my group chat the other day. Uh huh. People are like, people do that? And I was like, Yeah. I will do whatever I can to make somebody successful. Yep. There is no limit to what I will do. I don't give a fuck. Yep. So when I get an athlete that has to make weight for nationals and they're crying to me about being overweight for their weight class, I go, well, shut the fuck up. You're just going to eat these meals then. What a nice person. Oh, oh you're a representation of my company and it's not going to be a shitty one. So we're going to get you the results. Yeah. But yeah, you know, when you ask me why I charge so much, that's why, because I'm willing to do way more than most people would ever even think of. I'd love to go shopping with someone. Anybody out there that wants to go shopping and let me do their meals for them. I'm I'll in. fucking Instacart it to you. I don't even give a shit. Like, I don't even have to be there. I, I got be plenty across of the time. Country. I got plenty of time in the middle of the day. Let's go. Hawaii world we go. Start meal prepping for your people and just sell the meals at your gym. I got 37 chickens and rices. Who ordered them? No, just have them fridge and have them ready and people will buy them. Ooh, what would you charge? Just the cost, double 10 bucks the, at least. Double the cost of what it made to make it. I mean, when I put that question out, people were absolutely fucking asinine on oh. what they think that they would pay for someone to do that. I was oh. like, do you know how long this took? Yeah. How long did that take you? I'm curious. Probably two hours. Not terrible. But it still, I charged 150 an hour. Yeah. Two hours that you could have been doing other things as well. So, I mean, I still got everything done. The guy that I used to get meal preps from and sell his, he's, he's like, he's like, not enough. <laughs> no doubt, dude. I was like, hmm, no shocker. doubt. I'm going to put that in my group chat right now, actually. But, but, uh, I'm going to do that. Yeah, if it. you had a fridge and you had it stocked with meals, people will buy them. Convenience, bro. How should I say that in the group chat? What? Like, if I offered meals in a refrigerator at the gym... How much would you be willing to pay for each meal? Sounds like you just came up with the question. I'm just, hey, you know what? I'm trying here, buddy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. We do it at the gym. Ooh. I train out of and fucking I'll, people buy them all the time. I'll make a poll. That's what I'll do. There you go. Make a poll. <laughs> I think doing... realistically they should be like $15 because if you go out to eat and get the same quality of food, it's like 15 bucks. But mm -hmm. for those five days of food, guess what I spent on on that food right there that you made? Uh -huh. 125. That's too what? high. I was going to say 75, but 75 is about right. Yeah, I was I was like, no, that's too low. He's tricking me. <laughs> it's only five and a half days. I didn't yeah. get enough for a full week. That's three meals or is that four? Four meals for five days. That is days. a pound of yogurt a day. That is two to three pancakes and two meals of chicken and rice at 150 grams of rice and hundred or no 150 grams of chicken and 175 grams of rice. Nice. For a female to weigh 160 pounds. But, but, but 
That's too much food, Alex. That's what she told me. She's like, I'm gonna get, are you trying to make me fat? I'm like, you know, this is where we've run into this problem already is because you don't fucking eat enough. Beth made a good, she said, I'm a part of her email, Gers. Not Beth. Uh, what's the lady's name? The biceps lady. God dang it. Amber. Amber. God dang it. It keeps leaving me. Anyway. It's so nice for you to know her name when you got I, on the podcast. I, I, anyway, shut your mouth. They, she sent out an email today talking about that. It's like, if you're constantly in a deficit, 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 and you're telling your body not to eat, not to eat, not to eat, not to eat, at some point, it's going to go, enough is enough. Like, I'm not doing well, this anymore. Well, it wants anymore. to hold on to food as food, fuel. Like, it doesn't want to get rid of it. Right. It's a, a constant deficit. Like, I just got my water cut protocol. Oh, boy. It's going to be rough. Two to three gallons of water a day plus 10,000 or 10 grams of fucking sodium. Ooh. It's going to be fun. How much would you pay for meals that are prepped at the gym in a refrigerator? Say, how much would you pay for ready to go meals in a fridge? Got it. $5? Don't even put that as an option, dude. You can only, the $5 menu at fucking restaurants is now the $1 menu. So stop that. Dude, that's crazy, isn't it? Ugh. It's called inflation. So stupid. I judge inflation by how much my Chipotle burrito costs. Used to be six oh three when I started getting it. Stupid. Back in the dizzy. Bring on the Republican Party. I mean, bring on whoever's gonna save me money. That's all I give a fuck about. And who's not gonna try and sell us off to communist China, even though it's already happened. Mm-hmm. Too late. I listened to a Rogan podcast with a guy and I was just like, man, we're fucked. We are fucked. We are in trouble indeed. Just go look at the Elon Musk tweet that's been pinned to his program or his uh, profile. Which one is it? One? Uh, it talks about the one rule Democratic Party. <coughs> I'm like, yep, that's one terrifying. Rule. Like how mean? they're going to control... They're influencing oh. all these immigrants and how, like, they're going to get them the right, their ability Don't to let vote. Them vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this all started way back when with the fucking previous dictator of China before the one that's in there now. He blended communism and capitalism, and boy, are they killing it right now. Yeah, they seem to be doing it, right? Uh, they, they rule our country, so yeah, they're, they're doing just fine. I forget it's I forget which Rogan podcast it is, but it's fascinating. One of the newer ones. I'll have to go check that out. <coughs> mm-hmm. Old Joe. Still killing the game. Pretty solid being back on YouTube. Yeah, very big plus. Because then when I don't know what to watch, I just go to that. I that's all I do is watch Table Talk or that. Table Talk and Joe. Except for Table Talk just had that douchebag David Weck on. I can't. No yeah, what the heck? I was like, Dave, what are you doing? I think he just lets anybody talk. I wouldn't let that guy talk. He already influences. I wouldn't either. People. I'd tell that guy to go get fucked. He already influences enough people in the wrong way. He's just retarded. He's like almost Joel Seedman retarded. Yeah, he's definitely up there. <laughs> he's made some decent products, but man, his methods. No one will know. No. What products has he made that are decent? Uh, didn't he, he make the whiteboards? It wasn't really impressed. He did the Bosu ball. <laughs> the most incorrectly used thing in the world. So he had to make the whiteboards. Hey, it's profitable, you know. Yeah, but it was a complete accident. Yeah. Yeah, he's just a man. He's For those a, of you listening and you don't know how to use a Bosu ball, flat side down every time. The round side should never be on the ground. Correct. <laughs> Dude, I remember when those first came out. I was in college and freaking. <clears throat> Our coach made us. I think stand. those were out before you were in college. Maybe, probably. but he made me stand on a. They were, we like stood on one on each on each leg and took a sledgehammer and swung it like a baseball bat. And I'm like, what the? With hell? the round side down, right? So you had to stabilize with your hips. No, luckily this was not round side down. But I was just like, what yeah. are we doing here? I worked at Gold's. The manager's selling point was to get them on the Bosu ball and show them how bad their balance was to get them to sign up for go. I'm like, this is stupid. Uh, of course. Yeah. Which, if that guy ever hears this podcast, go fuck yourself. <laughs> sorry about you, buddy. No, I'm not sorry. I gave my two weeks and you fired me. Go fuck yourself. Oh, wow. Just on the spot, eh? Yeah. Wow. What a dill hole. 
well, we're worried about you being potential competition. But I go, I don't want to train these fucking people. That's why I'm leaving, stupid. These aren't the potential clients we want. I know. We're over it. These are not the Jedi Knights you seek. Oh, what a great movie. Is it, though? Yes. Don't, don't be one of those people. The Star Wars movies are great. Just let them be uh, great. Episodes one through three are questionable. Episodes... And I, when I didn't think it could get any worse, episodes fucking seven through seven nine. Seven through nine are way worse. worse. Yeah. So bad. At it's least, just, like, the lightsaber fights in one through three are pretty good. Yeah, that's fair, I guess. Darth Maul's dual-sided dildo thing's pretty sweet. Yeah, it is. It's freaking awesome. Love that. <laughs> Love that thing. And, I mean, you do allow fucking the coolest person ever to be in it with the Qui-Gon Jinn. Who's, who's his Liam name? Neeson? Yeah, Liam Nielsen. That guy's a dog. Mr. Raz Al Ghul himself. Mr. Al Ghul. For anybody who's never figured it out, <laughs> that no. is what my company is named after. They're never going to figure it out. Just let them I explained that name. to somebody yesterday. They're like, oh, that's pretty sweet. I go, well, it just made sense. You know? <laughs> it met the criteria. I was like, have you seen Batman Begins? They're like, no. I'm like, well, the guy that trains Batman to be a superhero, name is Raz Al Ghul. He be what I want to be. No, I just had a client that referred to me that, and he was also a marketing genius. So I was just okay. like, all right, I'm in. We're doing this. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I tried to make the app with Elevated Training. He's all, you can't do that. I go, what are you talking about? He's like, sends me four pages of search results. He's like, none of these are you. It's the same name. I'm like, right. Ooh, that's yeah. a problem. We can't find you. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, that is. Bit of an issue. Mr. Elevation Athletic Performance. I would like to rebrand as well, but I don't know how. It's rough. You just do it. I mean, take the L and move on. Yeah, I mean, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, you know. It only took me a year to rebuild my my fucking shit, but I also got shadow banned. I think that was a bigger issue. Yeah, I don't think it was actually that you needed. But now, rebuild now, it. motherfucker, he's now back. I never left, but guess who's back? <clears throat> I was back trying to see Khalil in two weeks. That poor guy's got so many appointments. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Oh man, his life is hell. Not good. Not good. Hopefully it's almost over. But it's not good, Patrick. I might see him in October. Air is not good, Patrick. Air is not good. I might be going to the Chicago Marathon. Ooh. Wait, I thought he lived in Atlanta. Khalil, I said Patrick. You said Patrick as in Pat. Oh, Pat. Pat. Patty McPat Pat. Yeah. Patty Matty. We got to get him back on because he got cut short. Did he get cut short? Yeah, I remember he had to leave. <coughs> no, I don't remember. That was like fucking forty episodes ago. No, I don't remember. Do you remember? No, yeah, that I was don't. that was. I really don't ago. remember. Wasn't it? Yeah. Talking about his super parent training. Super parent training. Yeah, an interesting niche. That's a good concept. That's smart. I just I would have never thought to like market to parents because fuck them. <laughs> Uh, parents need to take care of themselves before they take care oh, of their shit. kids. Because otherwise, they suck. Like, yeah. way to be a shit example. Your kids aren't learning thing if you're not setting the right example for them. So, oh, they're learning things, just all the wrong things, like whatever's on fucking social media. Speaking of which, see what Florida did. Yeah, they said if you don't want to be a parent, we will. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. No, hey, no man. social media for anyone under fourteen. Everyone, that's that's a probably a smart move. That's a big move. I'm all, I'm for it. I'm here for it. Dictatorish, but it's probably smart. no. I'm here for it. Bring it on. I know you are because you believe in Jeebus. Well, I mean, I think it's good. Protect them. <clears throat> they don't know how to protect themselves. Yeah, I just you know I'm really I appreciate a free market, so I don't know. I get that, but like if you're catering things, if you're pandering and marketing to kids, I get it. They're manipulating people with it, but yeah. I just. It's, the parents' job to make the kids smart enough to not do that, but we're we're just super conscious with our screen time. Like we're just like, be. I wouldn't give my kids screen time until they're eighteen. Right. We're like, oh motherfucker, go read a book and write in a fucking journal and shut up. Right. <laughs> Stay, <laughs> away. Stay away from the screens. Like people were like the other day, they're asking us, "Oh, when's she gonna get a phone?" And I'm like, "When she can drive, maybe." Like. Sorry, right. my younger clients, you know what they call me? Oh, God, no. What? <laughs> They're fucking assholes, but they call me an iPad kid. Ah, you sticky iPad kid. Yeah. I use my iPad for coaching. <laughs> yep. 
I don't touch my iPad anymore around these kids. Girl, what's up, iPad kid? I'm like, are you fucking joking me right now? I will I'm like you. I will take it as a compliment because you're calling me a kid. Like that's how old I am. That I will that to me is flattering. But fuck you at the you same know time. The, the episode or the moment in Happy Matt or Billy Madison where he's like, You wanna give me that snack pack? The kid's like shaking his head no. He's like, How about I trade you my banana for it? And then he's like, do you know I can severely beat you within an inch of your life? <laughs> <laughs> That's you with those kids. You called me yeah. what? <laughs> and I don't know. They have a better head on their shoulders than most of the adults I encounter. So That's good. I don't know who has the better and clearer heads anymore. I made a post about kids I, this I morning. I thought the kids so. were fucked. And like, these kids are, you know, they like a couple of them work jobs and go to school full time and pay for tuition and... That's like, tough. They do the damn thing. That's tough, but good for them. It's going to serve them better later on. Pretty impressive. Even the yeah. high school girl I coach, she works quite a bit and goes to school. And so that class president. That seventh grade kid came in this morning with his grandma because she comes. She's my four thirty client. She came in and she was like, "The kid in the jeans and moccasins." <laughs> yeah. And they're on. What's spring? going on with that one? <laughs> Why? I don't know that Tell he knew. He was, some well, he didn't. I don't think he knew he was coming because oh, Tuesday she just brought him. Well, Tuesday, she was like, hey, I'm going to ask him if he wants to come. Do you care if he comes in and trains? I'm like, I don't care. Bring him in. If he'll get up at 430, absolutely. Because they're on spring break, too. So, Right. So, yeah, he gets up. Spring break here. I've gotten a nice break this week. He just rolled in. And he's like. Working on that five hours of sleep. (laughs) Not so successful yet. He was like, what did I just. We did trap bar today. He was like, what did I I get on a trap bar? I was like, oh, it was like 240, you know, for, for five. And he was like. Oh yeah, that's Pretty cool. Good. That's cool. That's cool. Like, he was just excited, and then like we did some sumo in jeans and stuff. moccasins. Not like yeah. you got to throw that caveat in there. Cause... It was funny. He was like, uh, he pulled it, and he was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, that was a ten. That was." A 10. I was like, "Dude, that you made that look." That was like, "That's like a seven. I'm like, "You don't know what a ten is yet," but that was like a seven. <laughs> He's yeah, like, how many people do know what a ten is? Right. It, it was just funny because he would. I don't know that anybody knows what a ten is. Oof. I know what a ten is. <laughs> Because of your ass. <laughs> uh, Death to you, buddy. <laughs> I had a client, uh, BJJ player I coached here from Miami a couple of weeks ago, and I did the same thing to her on the hack squat. And <laughs> she just fucking quit. I went to like help her out of the rep for the last couple and like really grind it out, and she just fell to the ground. Dead. I was like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> She's like, it was hard. I'm like, so you just drop? I also had a lady I was helping with bench press the other day and I was doing the same thing, right? I'm trying to like put my hands under it, let them grind it out a bit. She just takes her hands off the bar completely and let's go. Oh, Jesus. (laughs) I was like, what the fuck? What just happened? Yeah. And she like started getting frustrated with me. And it was funny because at the beginning of the workout, I had just gotten done working out and it takes me, you know, like 15 minutes or so to get my nervous system to calm down and to like, Get back to like normal, see? Normal human. She's like, she's like, what's wrong? You seem mm-hmm. on edge. I'm like, lady. Like, I'm like what? I'm like, lady. I just got done lifting. <laughs> yeah, I literally just did squats this morning, or no, I was doing bench. I think. I don't know. Either way, when I train for the powerlifting meet, it's not me that you're dealing with anymore. That's not. It's you know. Anyways, we're gonna, we'll go down that road another day. But leave me alone for like a long, a little bit after. I fucking yeah. I crush twelve hundred calories and take my post workout pills and like slowly start to get back into it. I'm normal then, again. Thank you. And then she goes to throw the bar on her face, and I have to catch it. And I'm like telling her, I'm like, please don't ever fucking do that again. And she's like, don't talk to me right now. And I go, ha, you know exactly what I was experiencing then. You get it. <laughs> ha. <laughs> Uh, gotcha dude that oh my god i watched that happen one time in my gym with a safety squat bar i just rolled it off oh I what no had the handles and they oh. went down and they got halfway up and they just went ah that's all that's all i heard was ah and i'm like what the? <laughs> oh, and what was what was bad is like, i was like do you need a spot right before that i was like right i said no They're like no i'm good i don't know i, can, I, can do I this. this is cool yeah and they took they it out of the fucking handles off. They'll, they'll think about that again. God, I was so I was like, "You freaking idiot!" They're like, "Oh, it just it got heavy. It got heavy." I'm like, 
So do, what? Let it kill you. What do we do? <laughs> just go to the bottom. We'll help you. Like, chill. I had a deadlift yesterday. I didn't know if I was going to get it. I was like, what? <laughs> I had another girl one time. She was pretty new. She's a high schooler. <laughs> she doesn't gauge intensities very well. This is why also I don't Does like anyone. No. Right. So this is why I don't like the RPE scale. Because then you, you ask people like, what did that feel like? You know? And did we talk about how people actually use RPE that I didn't know about? Yeah. Yeah. And so like, I just kind of use it to gauge, like, you know, like one of the feedback. Yeah. 100%. And so <laughs> he was like, I don't know. I think she had a plate on the bar and uh, she was like, yeah, that was, that was like a four. I'm like, oh, okay. That's a, good. That's a four. So I walk away. Cause I'm like, I told her to put like maybe five more pounds on each side just to be safe. And, uh, I walk away and I'm helping someone over here and she's over there. And all I hear is help. <laughs> it's like, and I turn around and she's at the bottom of the squat, just holding the bar. And I'm like, safe to say it wasn't a four then, huh? And she was like, no, it was, wasn't a four help, please. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I was like, first of all, squat inside the rack next time. Second of all, if you're going to do it without a spot, Put some safety pins up there. Oh, my. So, a uh, good teaching moment, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, that's not a four. So, then now every time that she trains, I'll ask her that, and she's like, you know I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> Just giving up defeat, huh? Oh, it was so funny. I died laughing. <coughs> Help. <laughs> oh, man. I think my clients think I'm going to kill them, but I, I don't. Uh, I actually let them die. I always think it's funny when I put Did weight you work on... out today, pussy? No, not yet. But uh, I think it's funny when people, you'll put weight on the bar for them and you know it'll be fine. And they'll be like, oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. And I'm like, it'll be okay. Trust me. I was me. like Jeff at the seminar last year. He's like, how do you know? I'm like, well, Jeff, I've I've done this for a while. I got a pretty good idea. I got a pretty good idea. Need, <laughs> pretty, pretty good idea what people need to do. What's going on here? Yeah. Especially if I watched a couple sets before. Like, yeah, okay. We can kind of put two and two together most of the time. Most of the time. Not all the time. I have pools today, don't I? No, you have squats. I don't. A pool. Suck it. All right. I don't remember. I have so many clients, I can't keep them all straight. I have 70 million <laughs> clients. I can't freaking focus. No, I have like 27, but it's fucking a lot. That is a lot. Well done, sir. People are like, that's not a lot. Like, what? The level of detail that I give them, it is. It's fucking exhausting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess if I just handed out some fucking one size fit all cookie cutter programs, it wouldn't be that bad. Here you go. That's how it works. Here's the, the glute blaster workout. Like, Here's the glute blaster 6,000. We're going to do 20,000 reps of glutes today. Okay. Well, that's not how it works, but sure. I, mean, I think I've gotten really good at making glute workouts since I write programs for that chick. That's pretty. Yeah. Does that chick eat well? Take that as a no. What are you laughing at? I don't understand. Next question, please. No, don't be a butthole. Next question, please. All right. All right. I see what's happening here. What a loser. <laughs> we're, we're not going down this road. Whoa. Next question, you please. You had to take it wrong. I didn't even mean it in a bad way. I didn't I didn't take it wrong. I'm just telling you we're not going down this road. Next question, please. <laughs> what happens when you build the booties, Alex? Uh, not, I don't know. I just, we're not, we're not discussing what that person may or may not do for when things are asked. That's all. <laughs> not going to throw them under the bus, huh? Um, nope. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. This took a weird Next turn. question, please. This That's what I'm a... saying. If you would have just asked another question like I fucking told you to. <laughs> took a weird <laughs> turn. And you just brought up more butt stuff for some reason. I don't understand. But ladies, if you want glutes, I can help you. If you listen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I have no idea. What no. happens there? I need to go. I need to go get my workout in for my.
my clients show up. I uh, gotta go row, row, row my boat. Is that what you meant by poles? Is rows? Yeah. No, oh, those aren't poles. Poles are deadlifts. Push, jackass. pull, squat, hinge. Come on now. Come on. That's yeah, made famous by D. Ray Singler. I don't think it was made famous by him at all. But... Oh, no. He makes it famous by all of his wonderful programs he puts together. I mean, it just makes sense. Yeah, I know. I told Arlie this summer, I was like, dude, we're going to have all these little kids in here. I'm like, you're just going to live and die by Ray's book. Like, You're just going to live and die by it. Like, If you're ever worried about what you're programming to those dudes, just reference his book. You'll be fine. Shout out, Ray. Shout Thanks out, for Ray. being awesome. Great book, by the way. If you're a new coach and you need to figure out, or even just any coach, it's a good book to have for sure. I shouldn't admit this, but I have yet to read it still. It's just sitting on my desk. It's really good. Broad X trading. It's really, really good. Ray is one of those, dude, man, he just gets after those kids too. I love listening to his posts. He just, did you see the one where they were doing the jumps the other day? Uh, probably. And the kid jumped off the thing wrong after he just told him he did a good job. And he was like trying to give an example. And he's like, could you jump off the thing the right way, you asshole? <laughs> or he's like, you're being an asshole or something like that. Messing up the drill. It was hilarious. I was like, man, Ray don't hold nothing back. Yeah, that's, that's how I treat those kids. I treat them like little adults. I'm like, Listen here, you little shit. Yeah. Listen here, Wonder fucko. This is what we're doing, okay? CJ's throwing today. I wonder how CJ's playing right now. He's pitching today. He's Probably throwing. like shit if you coach him. All right, asshole. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. If you went somewhere like Cressy, you could beat something. What the fuck that guy? <laughs> he is the most like fragile coach I've ever met. Oh, don't I'm do fragile. too much. Don't do too much Wish with him. I would have known. And now he's the Yankees. I never thought I'd be so fragile. No, what? like nothing. I hate Cressy. You're going out I'm alone. Not a Cressy fan. Not a Cressy fan. I mean, he coaches up your boys in New York. I yeah, and not. guess what? We always have the most people on the injured list every year. Huh? 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 Some correlation. What are you talking about? Yeah. It was like the year Lauren Landau was the strength coach here, and they had 15 hamstring injuries. Tell him to. Mm. Oh, what is this? Did I get another package? My I God, bro. Package. Yeah. Calm down. Calm down, Jeff Bezos. Fuck you. Calm down, Jeff Bezos. I don't use Amazon that often. Thank Jeff, you very much. That often. He had to throw that in there. He does use it. He is communist. It's fine. Like once or twice a year, maybe three times. They suck, man. I hate that I have to use them. You don't have to. Oh, I do too. You can drive to the store, even if it is Bentonville. I'm not driving to Bentonville. I'm not going to Walmart. They're just as bad. Screw Walmart. Pretty sick bike parks down there. They got what? Pretty sick bike parks down there. They do have some good ones. Yes, they're big into mountain biking. Kids talk about it a lot. That's a very hot destination for sure. Uh huh. I'm like, I didn't even know this was really a thing. They're like, oh yeah, yeah we go down here all the thing. time. That's pretty cool. In Arkansas. Arkansas. I like Arkansas. It's gonna be like. Hopefully, I get some good food. What are you getting today? Food. I said, I said, I wonder what Atlanta's going to be like. Oh, you know. Chicken and dip. Welcome to Atlanta where the play is play when we ride on them things like every day. Mm -hmm. One of those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm almost on three weeks of no weed. That's impressive. For me, especially. Because that was a... Every two hour thing for like almost ten oh, over ten years. Wow. Uh, 10 years. Yeah. Look at you. I always okay. told people I'm like I'm not addicted to it. I'm just an addict. There's a difference. Like I'm not there is no like he fucking thing that makes me want to do it. It's just I get bored, so I do it. Yeah, if he does something, he just does it. He's all in. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. That is true. But hey, that's all right. It's a blessing and a curse. Yeah. All right, man. I'm going to go lift heavy things. You're going to go lift? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I gave myself a power nap today, so now I'm ready to lift. I need a power nap. I got about two hours last night because my... Dealing with Does the some... baby you need to shake. 
No, I'm, she's been having respiratory stuff. Now I'm having respiratory stuff, and I'm just like, God bless America. So every what happens when you're mentally weak and you let your kids get you sick. Yeah, mentally weak. That's why I got sick. You shut out of sight, out of mind. Doesn't happen. Stop it. Stop it. So I took a power nap. We're ready to go, baby. Fair enough. I need to upload the previous two episodes of YouTube still. Get your life together. I don't know why they keep missing the Dropbox. All right, I'm gonna make sure I do that first this time. You suck. Hey, I, I, I do not suck. Take that back. No. You take Get it back. back. See if I ever come right. to Vegas well, again. That was a good. Good. I don't want you to go. You didn't do anything fun with me, anyways. What? I ate that donut. Yeah, and I guess we went to the bodies exhibit. That thing was so cool. That's pretty cool. Anyway, I just don't want anyone who ever seen an embryo. Strippers. Crazy. Yeah, if you don't think of humans, anyway, never mind. I'm not going down there. Not that's gonna, after I I still stick to my 12 week rule, but that's just me. But you can definitely see a tiny human from the very little stages as well. Mm, debatable. Looks like whatever. An alien. You can see it. Stop being a dick. Looks like an alien. Stop being like, a dick. If aliens fucked monkeys, I think it would make us. Oh my god! Get this guy out of here. <laughs> you get us out of here. Take it out. Take us out. All right. Thank you guys for watching. If you made it, to the bye show. everyone. Thanks again. See you next week. Go fuck yourself if you don't like our show. Whoa! Yeah, that was pretty out of pocket, as the kids would say. Good God, get this guy his iPad. He doesn't know how to function without it. Oh my fuck! Fuck you, fuck ball. Yeah! Okay? That was a good one. All right, see You're you guys. You're a fucking fuck. Peace out, world.